I love when the sun hits in this room. <clears throat> That's why I set up right here. So we can use this natural light. It's a great place to meditate and just relax. And also it's like on the far side of the house. Um, so it's a great place to sort of be on your own and be quiet. I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely feeling that there's a full moon coming <laughs> tomorrow. Um, Venus in retrograde is, I guess, finally upon us. I mean, it's happening, I think, on Sunday. But, you know, the planet, when it goes retrograde, it begins to slow down. So I'm already, I'd say I'm already feeling the effects of that Venus retrograde. If something, something within you feels like it's being challenged a bit, um, pay attention to what that is. Uh, because for the next six weeks, you'll get a chance to uh, really focus on uh, what it is you want to change about that, what it is, you know, get six weeks to wrap your mind around something, I guess. Um, whilst giving yourself permission to not have to make a decision about it in the meantime. And so v Venus exits retrograde end of January, January 29th. The shadow period of that retrograde lasts maybe like another month. So March 1st, really. Man, that's uh, January, February. Oh yeah. So the first two months of the year can have this, possibly for some people, this feeling of a false start. Like there's a lot of energy underneath, um, but maybe something just not clicking right away. Um, the Venus in retrograde challenges us to not do the superficial thing. Don't do the thing that just feels good in the moment. Just really think about what you're doing. And, um, you know, think about how your actions affect other people. Think about how your actions might um, you know, give others the wrong impression about who you are. So like there is a bit of like this, the, the message of authenticity in there a little bit of just like, are you really doing the thing that's right for you versus other people? It's like balancing your needs and other and the needs of others a bit. So I wasn't planning on getting into this Venus retrograde information, but it just came out. So there it is. Um, that's one deck shuffled. If you look at where Venus is in your chart, like the house that it appears in, look up what that house means. And that might be something to pay attention to. Uh, for example, for me and all of my housemates, we all have Venus in the third house, third, the house of uh, communication. So we'll see how that, go <laughs> that turns out for all of us here. Uh, we might have some we might realize we have different ways of communicating or something like that, or, you know, that'll just be, I think, accentuated in some, in some forms. Let's see what energies are currently available, available to us today. It's Friday, December 17th. Um, my house had a white elephant gift exchange yesterday and I got this beautiful vessel it's a vessel of some sort I did put water in it <clears throat> and I'll set it out for the moon and uh, it just looks it looks perfect here so thank you uh, to my friend Paulina who bought that and thank you to the universe for allowing me to walk away with it last night. Time to coffee. Okay, let's see where we go. I got this card last night. I pulled this card for myself last night, literally. Literally. Oh God, you can't see it. It's the full moon in Taurus. Your dreams need a practical plan. 
full moon Leo. This card came out last night too. Don't let pride get in your way. And full moon Pisces. All three of these cards came out last night. Not that it matters to you watching. But it does matter to me. I think it's so cool to see cards out on repeat after I've shuffled, I've shuffled, and I pull from the back and I pull from the front and like the same things appear just like the page of wands for me has been appearing in the same position of several readings now in a row for like a couple weeks or a week and a half. What is that? It's like... So the moon, the moonology message here is something to the effect of, well, the full moon in Taurus is all about like you're literally making like a to-do list. Something about having um, a list of chores to do, you know, like practical things, day-to-day -day things. These are your like your life maintenance things. But also it's important in planning for the future to have these lists so that you know you can sort of check up on your progress and actually just stay on track to what it is you want to manifest that is coming to a head with um, what feels like some social obligation here this makes sense for the holidays absolutely but don't let pride get in your way like we might um we might over this might be something like overseeing the nuance of our relationships because we are so um, sort of stuck on the task. <clears throat> Balance spirituality and practicality. Your dreams need a practical plan. Look at all this like pragmatism on the table. Okay. And don't let pride get in your way. That's um There might be things like you feel like you want in the moment. But it's asking here to like check that desire against some some more practical <laughs> measuring methods or something. Leo, I mean, that's the ego, right? That's, let's just see what, what happens. Eight of cups, sorry, eight of pentacles. I just got really hungry. 10 of wands, five of pentacles, two of pentacles, two of swords, the hanged beast, wheel of fortune, five of cups, queen of pentacles, Nine of Wands. So, okay, so this is for somebody who's been working really hard on something, working on mastering something. And it's been sort of like this uphill climb. Interesting. So... If somebody feels like they've just closed out some sort of cycle here, because we have the, the Ten of Wands, the Five of Pentacles, a, a cycle that's made them feel like it's taken a lot, a lot of, if it's taken a lot out of you, um, to the extent of, of, of feeling somewhat like a burden, right? I feel like this is like something about the wanting to feel free from something. 
it's been holding you back in the present Also, I feel like this work has given you a new perspective on things. Huh. In the, in the present, we have the hanged beast and the wheel of fortune. It's almost like you're looking back and being like, yep, this all happened for a reason. Like I'm doing this, this is all happening to me for a reason. I'm working on myself. Um, in the future, I do see a little bit of like disappointment and sort of hanging in there and the Queen of Pentacles showing up. This She's looking at her pentacle like, yeah, this is what I want. The Queen of Pentacles lives the manifestation that the magician manifests. But it's surrounded by this disappointment and sort of like this nine of wands. So, it, and because this is the underneath energy, the, the Eight of Pentacles, which is all about this like working, it's almost like working in isolation. Somebody's working on something, a project or just on themselves. I sense that if there is disappointment, it's because this cycle, whatever is closing out here, it's, I see it in the past, the present and the future. It's still here. Um, that might be why it's disappointing is because it's almost like the feeling of not totally having moved on for, from it, but still wanting to be in this new place. There's a, it's a bit of a cuspy energy. I think that what it requires is some, some mind shift, some mind perspective. That's probably why the full moon Taurus came out. Your dreams need a practical plan. If you are dreaming, um, don't just rely on sort of like the romantic notion or the feeling of it which is good. I feel like the f manifesting the feeling is the first part. Like, what does it feel like to have the things that you want? Beyond that, you do have to make a practical effort. Make that to-do list. Make that spreadsheet. Track your data. <laughs> Let's see, what kind of clarifications can I get here? First of all, show me the Eight of Pentacles. The lovers yeah somebody's working on themselves here whoa a huge chapter is closing for somebody this feels true for you i love that i love when the wise old tree comes up because it, it totally reminds me of to question everything that you think you know and in this case what do you think you know about yourself the world is a reminder that yes Things are coming to an end. A new cycle will begin. And in the meantime, there's really nothing left to do. I think this is sort of, this is, man, this and the hanged beast, which appeared in the center. This is the energy of total surrender, right? Surrender to the journey. Wheel of fortune, let the time pass by. This is totally Venus in retrograde energy. <clears throat> Venus in retrograde asks us not to make big decisions. This is two of swords is the block. Two, two of pentacles. I just realized that two twos came out back to back. We have two twos, two tens, two fives. This is, yeah. And then we have a lot, we have so many cards on the table about uh, patterns, cycles, endings and beginnings. Hmm. Yeah, just cause the cycle hasn't closed out totally and this new thing maybe in your mind you're there like you want to be in this new place already but you can't be there physically or like some one or the other thing is needing to catch up you can use this time by planning really really planning like plan the details of it but don't don't do it yet because you they might they might just set you back show me the ten of okay 
Ten of Wands is clarified by the King of Wands. King of Wands sometimes represents like the ideal partner. The King of Wands is really inspirational and can easily see the needs of the people around him. Hmm. Could this be you? This could be somebody in your life. Five of uh, pentacles, please. Strength. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody in your life who's helped you along the way. This, I mean, this could even be like indicative of like therapy or like some kind of like some kind of a therapist or like somebody helping you through something you know, like a spiritual sort of guide or, or, you know, your own sort of methodologies there, you know, faith. The five of pentacles is clarified by strength. So it's almost like it's saying you're all this work you have been doing that has felt like a bird and you're finally able to move on from it because you, you found compassion for yourself. Don't let pride get in your way. You didn't, you didn't let pride get in your way you were prideful you'd still be stuck in this sense of lack like why is everything happening to me two of pentacles ace of pentacles yeah not sure what to do with an opportunity possibly in the recent past that came up feeling like there is something to grab onto but unable to really balance it all at the moment i think that's fine i think it's important to have been working on whatever is happening here with yourself, like questioning yourself, because if we make a decision based on a direction to go in that isn't really aligned with where we want to go, like if we're just doing it for the sake of making a decision, what's the point? And again, oh, this, this reminds me of the last reading I did actually. The Two of Swords is clarified by the Ten of Cups. This is about making a decision towards the thing that will make you feel happy, make you feel fulfilled. Don't make a decision just for the sake of making one. The hang beast, which is total surrender. Yeah, but you're ready to go. You're surrendering, but you're also like, universe, take me somewhere, take me anywhere. It's fine. Just show me where I need to go. Wheel of Fortune. Eight of Wands. Um, I got a co-star message the other day that, to that kind of resonates with this, which is um, you need to answer the questions the universe asks you. <sighs> so in the recent past, right, there's all the, this, this wand energy, ten of wands, king of wands. Sometimes we do need to go out and ask for inspiration and ask to be inspired. We're doing all the work so that we can have some kind of input. When that shows up, when you start to feel like you're getting a sense of what's out there, like what's in front of you, the energy that's available, that's when this sort of stuckness comes up because we have the ten the ace of pentacles, but you're the but you're sort of like which one <laughs> so the universe brings the ace of pentacles and you're like which one the universe brings the ten of cups and you're stuck in your head about like well i don't know what's going to make me happy something like that you're still in the place of universe just show me the way i'm surrendering the three of wands in this in in this deck is sort of like your bags are packed and you're ready to go you are ready to go, but you're also like surrendering. So this is great. You've like really taken to heart this like Sag Eclipse energy of I'm open. Here I am. <laughs> Waiting just for some more messages to come in. Um, the Wheel of Fortune. Oh my girl. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune was uh, clarified by the Eight of Wands.
I gotta say, nothing is happening anytime soon. Like, not in the present. I don't feel that. But, like, somebody has, like, cracked themselves wide open. At least they say they did. They say they are. You say you are open. You want to receive downloads. You're trying to see things from a different perspective. But there's this still this feeling of disappointment here in the future. I feel like you're not able to make a decision for one reason or another. Five of... <clears throat> Five of cups, please. Uh, clarified by the Six of Cups. Sequential. One comes after the other. I think, you know, that tells me that this is this is temporary. This thing is like a natural, maybe disappointment is a natural progression of things. Um, I would say don't, don't focus too much on the things that didn't work out for you or that you feel like aren't working out for you here in the near future. The end of this is that this, this need to feel more in balance with yourself. Maybe you're disappointed. You know, six of cups could be like something about the past. Are you feeling about feeling disappointed about something that didn't work out in the past? In this period of waiting and being shown where to go, you're in the energy of the past. Queen of Pentacles, please. The chariot which represents Cancer. We have Leo and Cancer, astrological signs. I mean, uh, Gemini here, full moon in Gemini. <clears throat> like the Cancer showed up on, on this like Queen of Pentacles. These Cancers are very, sort of like this is self-nurturing. Maybe it's something like in your in your feelings, in your heart, you feel disappointment about the past, but in the physical sense, you're still moving forward, which is good. Then we end on the nine of nine of wands. Page of Cups. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is very similar to like to the last read in, in one or many different ways but maybe this one resonates for some people more than others the nine of wands something about the cycle like still dealing with a lesson and the page of cups is about being open to your intuition I see So in, in some ways, this is about aligning sort of like your mind, your body, and your heart, because in a physical sense, there's like, <clears throat> in the 3D, you sort of like know what you're going after, or maybe you don't know. There, there's, there seems to be more movement in a physical sense versus in like an emotional sense. Uh, the feelings are tied up to our thoughts. And you keep looking for signs without addressing the fact that your, your, what you think becomes your reality. The hanged, the hanged beast buzz is about getting a new perspective. Enlightening yourself. So maybe this, this is about maybe seeking, seeking new information. What do you know about yourself? Like, what are you, what are you hung up on here? Let's ask that. What's the holdup? I'm looking right at the Two of Swords, Three of Pentacles, Temperance, Knight of Pentacles.
<clears throat> so for some of you, this might be you are not able to really see. <clears throat> Excuse me. This might be true for some of you that you're not able to see your Ten of Cups. You're not able to see sort of like this light at the end of the tunnel. Because what is required is this practical plan. Some, some of you won't let yourselves believe that happiness is possible just on a whim. Like you can't just transport. For some people it might be very difficult to transport yourself into that happy place. Sort of like automatically, you know, they say like close your eyes, go to your happy place. For this person, that's not possible. I think that the, the physical world around them is a little bit, looks like, overwhelming. <sighs> there might be things reminding you of this or that, the lessons, like, in, the, in, a, in a physical sense, this is for somebody who's, like, really been doing a lot of difficult work. In the physical, so they can't see beyond... They can't see. Rather, they do see that it, all the work that it requires. Like they've seen, they can see how far they've come, and they they can see how far they have to go. So to them, it doesn't feel like it's here available. But I think this read says that it is available. It sort of requires one either asking for help, or there's something here about like saying. Try, trying trying it sort of trying it differently approaching it a little bit differently than um, what we understand if <clears throat> if what you want is this ten of cups don't just go about it doing it the same way I could see you sort of ready to go for it but also like hands off okay universe this is this is in your hands you're not really taking excuse me any any proactive steps towards this ten of cups it's almost like you're waiting for some outside influence here to see how like you, you make a you make you make one step forward you see how it feels you take another step forward you see how it feels and there's like a lot of time for adjusting you're leaving you're leaving enough buffer space to make small adjustments that's what i got that's interesting <clears throat> the the period of time leading up to what is up with my voice today? <clears throat> the 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 moon cycle leading up to the full moon is the you know like the third quarter moon ish, but we're past that now anyway. Is all about real reevaluating things, you know, before the actual full moon. So maybe it's a bit of that energy. I'm gonna just read the. Um, the Moonology book for a few minutes. Your dreams need a pl practical plan. Write down 10 things that you know are wonderful about you. Chasing money doesn't work. You need to chase a dream. Jealousy or envy create negative energy and attract negativity. More exercise is called for. New Year's resolutions, guys. Laziness could explain your current situation. If so, change and own it. The full moon in Taurus is a time to get back to Earth, get grounded, to work through any negative feelings you've been dealing with, and to find balance between pa being passionate and being overly intense. Uh-oh. Money issues may come to a head at the time of the full moon in Taurus. Uh, you can take this card as a sign to pay attention to your cash flow. Okay. Yeah, wow. I mean, that makes me read this whole past a little bit differently. So you can... This Ten of Wands can be construed as, like, sort of like a lot of passion here. Um, wanting to do all the things. And the King of Wands. The King of Wands has all the resources. Or at least he thinks he does. And he just sort of, like, dic he dictates his life the way he so pleases. Needs no validation. 
if you do this in a, during a period of your time, again, it says to look out for cash flow, when you're actually low on resources, it's asking you to be a little bit more mindful of that. Um, you know, you might be making a decision sort of how in what to invest in specifically. And you see how like the two of cup, the two of pentacles is, is like, well, I want both of these things, but maybe all you can do is afford the one. So just be mindful <clears throat> of that. I know there's like a lot of social obligation to buy everybody gifts and spend all your money, capitalism, yada, yada, yada. Uh, next one, full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. Be magnificent without being plain too much. Self-esteem is good. Vanity is not. Everyone is equally important. Creative urges should be followed. Work some magic. And a friendship may be ending now. <sighs> this card may have come to you because you need to end a deadlock that has been developed. What did I say? More love and thoughts for the greater good are the solution to this dilemma. If you've not been doing as you would be done by lately, this is a time to find balance between your own needs and the needs of people around you. I did say that. This will help all of your relationships. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is landing. And let's see, full moon in Pisces. By the way, these are all full moon cards. I just realized that. I, so a lot of things coming to a head here. Full moon Pisces, balance spirituality and practicality. Meditate every day and see what comes to you. Answers will come. Yes. You're in a super romantic but not super realistic state. Okay. Follow your intuition and won't let you down. At worst, this card can herald the end of a dream. The person you're inquiring about is a soulmate and avoid substance abuse. Some of these, they have a really wide range of interpretation. That's why I like to read them all, especially in, in extremely general readings. Have you been so head in the clouds that you've lost touch with reality? If so, take this card as a sign that you need to pay attention and make a concerted effort to move towards your goals. The more practical steps you can take, the better. It's time to find an inner balance between your responsibilities and your dreams. Ooh. Meditate on your question and the solutions to your issue may now come through very clearly. If you're in a tricky situation because you've been acting the martyr, this card will be a message from the cosmos to drop the act for everyone's sake. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, so the full moon in Pisces symbolically marks endings. When the moon is, in full, is full in Pisces, or whenever you pull this card, it's a time to dive deep into your emotions. Practicality is at odds with the numinous Piscean energies that have no borders. So feel your way now. Psychic ability is heightened when the full moon is in Pisces. Soulmates now connect. It's also a time to send out your dreams to the universe, releasing your fears. These all sound like very practical and personal and important things to do while we're all waiting for the end of the year and for the new year to begin. <laughs> and then sequentially waiting for Venus retrograde to end uh, so that we can make some real steps towards the things that we all want you know this this ten of cups wouldn't it be great if by if by the end of January you had a step-by-step -step plan for the whole year of how you were going to get what you want so Make sure you take some time out for yourself this December and the new year. Plan a vacay, go on a trip. I'll be going on a trip um, to Big Bend, Texas. More on that later. Um, for now, I hope you have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And until next time.